Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Irna Wahyuni, NPM 20810114. I'm a college student of Psychology Faculty in Riau Islamic University. Now, I shall explain quite briefly about aggression as my social psychology task. For social psychologists, aggression is defined as intentional behavior aimed at causing either physical or psychological pain. True aggression involves the intent to harm another. The action may be physical or verbal, it might success in its goal or not. If someone throws a beer bottle at your head and you duck so that the bottle misses you, it was still an aggressive act. The important thing is the intention. By the same token, if a drunk driver unintentionally runs you down while you are attempting to cross the street, that is not an act of aggression, even though the damage would be far greater than that caused by the beer bottle that missed. Violence is an extreme form of aggression, as in acts of war, murder, and assault. It is also useful to distinguish between types of aggression. Hostile aggression is an act of aggression stemming from feelings of anger and is aimed at inflicting pain or injury. In instrumental aggression, there is an intention to hurt the other person, but the hurting takes place as a means to some goal other than causing pain. It seems obvious that men are more aggressive than women. More than 90% of all mass murders, divine as killing at least 4 people in one location, are committed by men. Men are more likely than women to get into spontaneous, unprovoked acts of picking a fight with a stranger, join in a flash mob bent on destruction and looting, and commit crimes of violence, murder, aggravated assault, rape. But as we will see, this fact doesn't necessarily mean that women are the shy, retiring, and peaceful sex. Males are theorized to aggress for two reasons. First, to establish dominance over other males and secure the highest possible status. And second, males aggress out of sexual jealousy to ensure that their mate is not having sex with other men, three be ensuring their own paternity. When females behave aggressively in the evolutionary view, it is generally to protect their offspring. Do not get in the way of a mother bear, or for that matter, a mother bird. It is commonly believed that the hormone that fuels male aggression is testosterone, which both sexes have, although in higher proportion in males. Testosterone itself can slightly increase aggression, but being in an aggressive, competitive, or sexual situation increases the production of testosterone. Most social psychologists, therefore, believe that aggression is an optional strategy. We humans are born with the capacity for aggressive behavior, but how, whether, when, and where we express it is learned and depends on our circumstances and culture. Several factors cause aggressive behavior to emerge which include Poor perspective in taking different abilities, namely individuals or groups who carry out aggressive behavior are influenced by their limited ability to understand situations and conditions as well as other people's opinions from their opinions. Misinterpretation of social cues, namely children who do actions that hurt friends, both verbally and non-verbally, are influenced by their inability to understand or interpret the behavior shown by others. In effective social problem-solving strategies, children who behave aggressively may have limited ability to negotiate something that may be good for their friends. Children do have the ability to achieve certain goals. This limitation of ability becomes as if it were without his will, which of course does not build a conducive relationship between friends and often results in attacking and antagonizing each other for quite a long time. Belief in the appropriateness and effectiveness of aggression Many children's aggressive behavior is believed to be the best way to solve problems. The imitation factor is the basis for children to do this. What children see, hear, and experience about ways of violence in solving problems that will be imitated and then internalized in children's lives. Children recognize power over how to negotiate to solve problems. 
Based on the explanation, the main factors of aggressive behavior are internal factors and external factors. Internal factors are factors that come from within a person, while external factors are factors that come from within a person. One of the external factors is parenting, especially authoritarian parenting. Does punishing aggression reduce aggression? Let's consider the complex series of punishment. Several experiments with preschooler demonstrated that the treat of relatively severe punishment for committing a transgression does not make the transgression least appealing to the child, but the treat of mild punishment of a degree just powerful enough to get the child to stop the undes the undesired activity temporarily, leads the child to try to justify his or her restraint and as a result can make the behavior less appealing. However, the use of harsh punishments to reduce aggression usually backfires. It may put a halt to a child's aggressive behavior in the short term, but children who are physically punished tend to become more aggressive and antisocial over time. Harsh punishments backfire for several other reasons too. People may shout things they don't mean or, out of frustration, use several methods to try to control the behavior of their children. The target of all this noise and abuse is then likely to respond with anxiety or anger rather than with a reaction of, thanks, I'd better correct that aggressive habit you don't like. In some cases, angry attention may be just what the offender is hoping to get. If a mother yells at her daughter, who is throwing a tantrum, the very act of yelling may give her what she wants, namely a reaction from mom. More seriously, extreme punishment, physical abuse, is a risk factor in children for the development of depression, low self-esteem, violent behavior, and many other problems. And finally, punishment often fails because it tells the target what not to do, but it does not communicate what the person should do. Spanking a little boy for hitting his sister will not teach him to play cooperatively with her. Because of these drawbacks, most psychologists believe that harsh punishment is a poor way to eliminate aggressive or other unwanted behavior. What are we supposed to do with our anger? Venting anger usually causes more harm than good, but stifling serious feelings is often not useful either. It is more effective to become aware of the anger and then to deal with it in ways that are more constructive than yelling or hitting. Cooling off, becoming more self-aware, perhaps through writing down your feelings privately. Learning to communicate your feelings in a clear but not judgmental or insulting way. Taking responsibility for acts that anger others through understanding and apologize. Learning how to solve the problem that has made you and the other person angry and strengthening empathic skills. Okay, that's all that I can serve to you. More and less, please forgive me. I hope it can give you benefit after watching this. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.